And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Hi, I'm meteorologist David Kramer with Alaska Weather. For our aviation segment, we are looking out over the flying weather conditions out of the Bering Sea and Aleutian Islands, all looking to be widespread IFR conditions. Those IFR conditions are encroaching upon the west coast of the state. We are seeing areas from Bristol Bay through the YK Delta and up through the Seward Peninsula as well with those IFR conditions. But out over much of the rest of the central and eastern portions of the mainland, we're looking at primarily VFR conditions. Then when we get along the far north Arctic coastline, we are starting to see some of those lower conditions return. Down in south central Alaska, much of the Cook Inlet corridor is still VFR, but we are seeing some IFR conditions out over the Gulf of Alaska that are spreading into the Prince William Sound area. Then down in the Panhandle, primarily VFR conditions, with some areas showing in VFR right near the Gulf waters. As we move into Friday afternoon, continuing to see primarily VFR conditions for the Panhandle, but those MVFR conditions are right along uh, the most outer islands nearest to the Gulf of Alaska. Out over the rest of the Gulf, we're seeing primarily IFR conditions extending still into Prince William Sound. Most of South Central is seeing primarily VFR conditions except for those areas right along the North Gulf Coast. Up in the interior, central and eastern locations seeing VFR conditions, but conditions diminishing as we move farther to the west, going to MVFR, and then to IFR right along the coastline for the west coast of the state. Up along the Arctic coastline, MVFR conditions are expected with IFR out further to the north. And finally, down in the Bering Sea and the Aleutian Islands, widespread IFR conditions will continue through Friday afternoon and into Saturday morning as well, all throughout the Bering and Aleutians, getting into the Alaska Peninsula as well. Along the West Coast, we are starting to see those IFR conditions uh, encroaching a little bit more there than they were from a Friday afternoon time frame. And then NVFR conditions well into the central interior at this point, with some areas of IFR in some of the higher terrain of the Brooks Range and down by the Alaska Range. Up along the Arctic coastline, still seeing IFR conditions there as well. And then down in South Central, seeing a lot more MVFR conditions here Saturday morning, with still some pockets of VFR around Cook Inlet. Down over the Panhandle, seeing more VFR conditions extending out a little bit into the Gulf waters on Saturday morning. Then as we move into Saturday afternoon, clearing up quite a bit more for some of those eastern Gulf locations, but some of that MVFR is actually going to extend into the southern portions of the Panhandle. IFR conditions for Kodiak Island through the Kenai Peninsula and throughout much of the western portions of South Central Alaska. Primarily VFR through the interior with some pockets up by the Yukon Flats of MVFR conditions and MVFR conditions through much of the North Slope. So we move down the west coast of the state, you're going to see quite a bit of MVFR there as well. And as we get closer towards the Bering, you're going to see primarily IFR conditions as all the Bering is under IFR. And central and western Aleutian Islands also seeing primarily IFR conditions. Taking a look at our pass is starting up north Anaktivik Pass. Start off EFR but drop down to MVFR conditions in the afternoon. That's going to be true at Adigan Pass as well. Lake Clark and Merrill will both start off EFR and drop down to MVFR in the afternoon. Rainy will be VFR throughout the day on Friday, as well as Wendy, Anna Isabel. And then we have Mentasta starting off marginal improving to VFR conditions in the afternoon. Tinita Pass looks to be VFR all day on Friday, and Portage should be down to MVFR all day Friday. Chilkoot and Wythe both expected to be VFR on Friday. For our freezing levels, we have a little bit of colder air up over the uh, northern portions of mainland. But our warmest conditions are going to come in out over the Aleutian Islands, where we will see freezing levels up to as high as 14,000 feet. Taking a look at our icing, uh, all out over the mainland, we are looking up along the North Slope area above 8,000 feet, and then from the southeastern interior through much of South Central Alaska above 10,000 feet expected there. For flight level winds, uh, not a lot of activity, pretty light winds out over the Panhandle area. Our strongest winds are going to be out over the Bering Sea, where our jet is out of a uh, west-northwest direction up to as high as 105 knots, extending out over the YK Delta area. Looking down at 9,000 feet, we're seeing westerly flow throughout the Bering Sea and Aleutians, uh, getting up to as high as 45 knots, strongest near the Pribilof Islands, 35 knots down by the Aleutians. Still fairly strong as we move out over the mainland part of the state, westerly flow for much of the west coast, 35 to 40 knots, highest as we get by the Seward Peninsula. Uh, around our low pressure system, however, we are going to see easterly winds over the northwest coastline out around uh, 30 knots or so. Then out over mainland Alaska, southwest winds in the interior, 35 knots, getting weaker out over south central and down for the panhandle. 
Down to 3,000 feet, we're seeing light winds over the Panhandle and South Central continue. Much of the stay will be fairly light, but we will still see stronger westerly winds out by the Norton Sound area, up to as high as 35 knots. However, the northwest coastline easterly winds at 25 knots is expected. So we move down into the Aleutian Islands area, strong westerly flow up to as high as 40 knots out over the central Aleutian Islands. For our turbulence, where we saw those stronger winds, we will see our areas of turbulence as well. Below 3,000 feet for the central Aleutian Islands, below 4,000 feet for the eastern Aleutian Islands and starting to get into the Alaska Peninsula. And then up by the Seward Peninsula, below 4,000 feet is expected.